6'2 guard from St. Louis, Missouri, Foye Aluakin. From Burroughs High School to Yale to Jacksonville, Florida, and now making his 1010 XL debut, it is Jaguars inside linebacker Foye Aluakin. How are you, sir? Oh, make oh, make sure we, we got to make sure we talk into the microphone. I'm doing well. Yeah. Yeah. What you like that intro? I know that was really cool. It yeah. Me of a big tournament like in high school. Yeah. Well, we just found out because uh, as much as we brought you in to talk Jags and college basketball, I didn't realize you were at the entire SEC tournament. Okay. So speaking of tournaments, <laughs> as we get ready for the Final Four, it's funny. We kicked around. All right, could we have a college basketball analyst? Could we have you know somebody who's going to be at the Final Four? And you and I had talked about it. Mm. We had said, well, if there's one guy in this town who watches more college basketball than <laughs> even me, the AP voter, it is Foye Aluakin. And so who better to break it down with us than Foye, which we'll get to the basketball in a second, but we can't bury the lead. Congratulations, sir. A round of applause, RJ. A four-year, $45 million extension with the Jacksonville Jaguars, and that includes $22.5 million fully guaranteed. Emotions, emotions for you, like when you, you sign on the dotted line, how did how did your agent break the news to you that you were staying in Jacksonville and getting a nice little uh, chunk of change, too? Um, it kind of was wasn't broken to me. I kind of uh, forced my hand there. So I'm trying to stay in Jacksonville a little bit. So um, just the way the offseason was going and uh, kind of looking at the linebacker market as well. And then also I think the Jags wanted to free up some cap space. Like, and I just wanted to like play for coaches that I trusted and trusted me. And, uh, you know, I met with Coach Nielsen before this all went down anyway. Um, I just felt like, you know, if the Jags really wanted to keep me around, I, I definitely wanted to stay here. So I um, told my agent, like, I know the numbers aren't, you know, linebacker market this year wasn't great. But I said, I know the numbers probably aren't where he thought I could go, but if we can get an extension to where I feel respected and the Jags wanted to keep me, let's make that happen. So, um, you know, signing it, um, kind of feel a duty to the city of Jacksonville just to win more games. Like it's kind of had a hole in my heart since the end of last season, uh, not even before the season ended, kind of just on that that stretch where we weren't playing our best football that, you know, that the city deserves better, the team deserves better uh, from me. So I think signing that more meant like my dedication to the team, to winning games was, that's, that's what I signed for at the end of the day. Um, money is money at this point in my career. I think I'm, I'm my happiness is going to come from winning games and leading the, the guys to – to become better players and a better unit on the defensive end. And then meeting with Ryan Nielsen, I, I have a whole bunch of trust in him to elevate my game even to the next level to become the best player that I want to be. Not that I can be, that I want to be. So um, I'm excited. Yeah. When you first talked to defensive coordinator Ryan Nielsen, and by the way, fans want to hear what you just said, that you're here to win games. That's what's motivating, not just the money. Of course, money's nice too. But yeah. when you first talked to defensive coordinator Ryan Nielsen, did you talk about where – you envision the defense going, whether it's a scheme change from him or more along the lines of the new free agents, kind of mm -hmm. how you envision this season. And this so defense. fortunately, he, he coached in Atlanta last year, and I guess he coached uh, the Saints before that. So he's seen me before. I uh, coached in Atlanta where I guess there was a lot of talk of me back in the day. Um, For good reason. <laughs> <laughs> so I went and asked all my old friends, like, what's he like? And um, they're like, you know, he's, a, he's definitely going to push you, uh, hold guys accountable. Uh, but he got us playing way better than we ever had before. So I was really excited when he was coming over this way. Um, and then me talking with him, first thing I asked is, like, what did you see from us? Like, what do you think we needed to improve on? Um, do you, like, because obviously, obviously when you get a new guy in, a new coordinator, a lot of times he brings his own guys that he knows and trusts or can fit his system, fit his scheme. And I think that's always important to have an identity and, you know, get guys that play your identity. Um, so... I was basically asking him, do you think we have the guys to play how you want us to play or do you need to go get guys? Um, and then he said what well, we needed to improve at, uh, who he has uh, trust in, like his positions and stuff. And uh, he has a, you know, he's done more with, I won't say less talent at the Falcons at the time, but he thinks we have a lot of talent here at the Jaguars. Um, so I have the utmost confidence that we all dedicate ourselves to playing how we're supposed to play. We can play even better than they did last year. 
Well, Foyer, I do want to say that when the news dropped of the contract, my tweet just said, glad you're here. And I mean that for Jacksonville and now here in studio. So we love you. And I know Jacksonville does too. But I want to talk a little bit about some of these young guys, because one of the guys we really saw last year kind of take a leap and uh, Trayvon Walker, Trayvon, someone we've really seen grow this last couple of seasons and him and Josh Allen kind of became like a two headed monster last year. Uh, what have you seen from Trayvon this last couple of years that shows like he has a place here in the NFL? Oh, he's always going to have a place just because of, one, his athleticism, and two, his drive. Uh, he's kind of soft-spoken, quiet, but he's just so um, confident and, and, and competitive. Mm -hmm. So um, whether it's outside talks to him not being what he's supposed to be, I think that fuels him some. Mm -hmm. But just trying to be the best every day, like he knows how, how dominant he can be, and he's been dominant in college, maybe without even the right tools. So he's always trying to learn how to advance his game more. And, like, even the off-season – you can always trust he's working. I always, you know, talk to him a little bit. He's always in Georgia doing stuff. He's always trying to improve on his game. So, like, that jump from this year to last year, like, he put in a lot of work. Yeah. But then coming on the field confident and, and knowing he can be dominant in his abilities, like, and then Josh coming in on the other side, he knew he he had a role to where he could get some. So, yeah. I'm happy that we he did. We saw it. We saw it. And uh, <laughs> I know he's going to keep going. I know he wants to be, like, a dominant force in the league, and he's definitely got all the tools for it. We have a text line for you where our listeners can text in, and we also have the YouTube chat line. We've already had several text in saying, I didn't know I could love Foyer more than I already did. <laughs> Another guy is driving in his car and sent the gif of, like, the, the fist bumping in the car. So music to Jaguar fans' ears hearing you live at 1010XL Studios. And I think they'll like the pivot for what we're about to speak about. <laughs> On March 22nd, after 13th seeded Yale stunned mm. fourth seeded Auburn, you tweeted, <laughs> "Oh, I can't wait to get to camp, man! Right? Illuminate for us man, your emotions wait. from start to finish of this Yale run." I mean, we should have ran even more. We had a we kind of stumbled the next game. I think we were too high off our our, our little Auburn win, but uh, it's just little so, Auburn win. Yeah, little, <laughs> little. Exactly how I'm gonna start too. I'm a, I'm a come in saying SEC is overrated. I could have played in the SEC. Ooh, here we go. Oh. <laughs> so this is where it all starts from football. And then they're going to say, why do you think? I say, well, yeah, it'll be Auburn and basketball. And there's a whole graphic on how much Auburn spends on a season for basketball, how much Yale spent. For some reason, we only spent $1.3 million. I don't know why. Um, I don't think they were spending much more on the uh, the football side either. For that. <laughs> With all due respect to the alma you know mater. So regardless of, you know, what it looks like, we clearly have the talent to beat However much you just because you have more media coverage and more cooler jerseys and bigger fans like I could play. We could all play. So I have proof of it. So I say schedule Auburn football. We're going to win it. I had to leave. <laughs> I had to, I I had to that's, leave. And that's the SEC champion. Right. I was there watching. That's the best in SEC. I was just going to say I had to lead with Yale because I knew that that would <laughs> that would get go. you going. Um, but yeah. yes, as we pivot to the college basketball portion of this conversation, oh, um, <laughs> I'm sure our listeners want to know, and, and we're going to ask you about your time at the SEC tournament, mm -hmm. too, as much as I told the listeners I wouldn't ask about the team in Lexington. And it was a sad day for him. Yes. Um, but was, yeah. how did you, first of all, you played high school basketball, extremely high level, mm -hmm. four varsity letters. How did you get into college basketball and become just so in the weeds when it comes to numbers and teams and projections? Um, it was really the only thing I was allowed to watch, I think, growing up with sports. Uh, I didn't really have cable. So cartoons and stuff that kids watch. I wasn't watching this. Was like PBS Kids. Like I watched every Arthur episode ever. <laughs> I loved. Uh, <laughs> yeah, see, it's great. I can probably re recall a lot of them from memory. <laughs> um, eventually, CBS was playing a lot of the SEC games, like regular season games. Mizzou was up and down at the time. Mizzou Kansas was a big rivalry. Eventually, that went away. Um, but every Saturday there would be a big couple games on TV and like. Uh, on Saturday, like sports, that's what I'll be watching, uh, college basketball. So it was fun to follow. And then obviously everybody liked Duke, uh, even in St. Louis. Like people like Duke and UNC. I'm like, I don't know why we're liking them all the way over there. Um, Kentucky was on one day when I was young playing Louisville, the rivalry game on CBS, I believe. And I rooted for the blue team because I like blue um, <laughs> over red. And then when they kept coming on, I was like, oh, that's the that's my team. That's my team. So uh, then we had the, the the video game NCAA March Madness. I always pick Kentucky. Um, that's before they had the names. Well, I guess they never did have the names on the bottom, but I know who the players were when I was playing with them and stuff. And so that just became my team, ride or die, until today. Yeah. 
Has Yale hit you up since your extension on uh, helping out their team since they only helping spent the one point three million dollar budget? So <laughs> last last time I was up there, actually, they they asked me to start donating, but mm-hmm. you know yep. those those guys are in a even different tax bracket than me. Like, <laughs> congrats to them. I was like, bro, we ain't we ain't got the same type money. Like, <laughs> so, some some of the guys were like, oh, I've donated, and you know. I've, I built a building. Or, yeah. I've, I've put the new locker room that's going to be on my name. We want you to. I'm like, oh, I don't know. I'm still helping out my family and stuff. Like, I'm just trying to, you know, dictate these little mini steps before. I, obviously, I want to learn how to invest and um, and have my money grow to where I'm confident enough to, you know, be in hedge funds and all this like them. But we're not in the same tax bracket <laughs> we'll yet. There. I mean, maybe the same tax bracket, but they got a lot more <laughs> right now. I can understand <laughs> that. All right. So who's your favorite player left in the tournament? The men's tournament. Everybody likes. Was it DJ? DJ Burns. No, Burns. DJ Burns. Yeah. Yeah. He's, Burns. he's really cool. I like Klingon. I saw. I said he should have been out last year. I was talking to me about it. But he came back for whatever reason. Probably some nil. Uh, he definitely improved his game. Um, but now he has UConn and the whole team really playing the best in the tournament again. Mm-hmm. What's your favorite storyline from that's left? Because obviously there's the DJ Burns double yeah. double seated NC State, or you have Purdue finally getting there. You have the back to back for UConn. Bama has kind of like a different game. I want to say I read that almost fifty percent of their field goal attempts made have been three pointers. Right. So it's been like heavy three point team. What, what's your favorite storyline there? I think the back to back because it's a little mm-hmm. different. It's a whole different team the last year, really. Yeah, like it's not the same starting five like our Florida did mm-hmm. back in the day. I don't want UConn to win because I don't want them to say. We're better than Kentucky, um, which they are right now. <laughs> <laughs> but I think uh, like that's probably a really cool storyline. Purdue, I, I'm not a big Purdue fan. They they have a lot of guys who I don't, you know, probably not going to be too successful at the mm-hmm. next level. But they've been there a long time doing their thing. Congrats to them. Um, they're playing solid basketball. Like yeah. they are coached well, all playing well. How. The game used to look. Yeah. And I, that, you know, kudos to them, but I'm, they're not my favorite team. Alabama is very fun to watch. Uh, they finally played a little bit of defense and now they're uh, winning games because of it. But, you know, they could always score at a high clip. Um, who's left? Who's the last team? Uh, NC State. NC State. Yeah. NC State. That's crazy. Um, <laughs> That's it, why you love the tournament, though. Yeah. But they have been playing the ACC. Some, them and Clemson were playing the ACC teams tough all year and losing. And now they're winning. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, they're you know Rob almost went there. He probably got oh Rob, De- Rob Dillingham. Yeah, yes. Rob Dillingham almost went. there. I saw you got... saw that on Twitter, right? Yeah. They're like, what could have been, <laughs> right? right? Um, but no, he, I think he was committed there at first, and then yep. somehow Kentucky got him. Um, they're very talented, and I think they were top fifteen to start the year or something mm-hmm. like that. So I, I think they always had the talent. They just started like I think DJ came out in a uh, interview right after they won and said they all finally started playing for each other, playing together. So. That does go a long way, and obviously seeing the wins helps too. But I, I'm definitely rooting for them. I think all mm-hmm. of America is at this point. Absolutely. Yeah, America's team. Uh, 631 on the text line says, hates the SEC. I just logged on to Jags.com to buy a foyer jersey. <laughs> um, let, let, let's talk big picture here. For you, because maybe you were slighted by some of these Power 5 conferences, now you play alongside guys that played in the SEC. Mm-hmm. You're the NFL's leading tackler the last three seasons, despite having played in an Ivy League school. What is your perception when it comes to basketball, but also maybe football too, when you see those blue bloods, especially having been at the SEC tournament? Um, football wise, I, I won't say I hate the SEC because they some schools did show interest. I just wasn't, I guess, interested in them. Mm-hmm. Uh, my parents and I kind of had a idea of where I wanted to go to school. I don't think the NFL was really in my side. Cause I like basketball, and when I realized basketball was in the picture, I didn't know that I could play NFL football just because growing up I was skinny a little bit maybe shorter. I was only six one coming out of high school and I always wanted to be six four playing basketball. Um NFL football for us was like Steven Jackson was a running back, you know, these big dudes, um untouchable really. Tavon Austin got drafted. Like these guys are the best of the best. You don't think, you know, a guy who went to this little school in St. Louis is gonna be the best of the best. Now we didn't really lose that much and we had Zeke, uh Ezekiel Elliott. Um, he was in my class as well, and he was torching everybody too. Um, but still, it's like, you know, it's a big jump from that to what these guys are. So obviously, I went to college, continues to grow in my game, and continue to lift weights. And it's just the more people I saw competed against, kind of like in basketball, I was always able to compete against anybody, no matter what the stature was. It gave me the confidence that, you know, I had a spot in the league. Um, 
So when I saw the SEC basketball tournament, I'm a little older now, so it's a little different. Like, um, there are guys who are going to make the NBA and there are guys who aren't. Um, now, who's going to win the tournament is the team who's playing the best. So, like, Kentucky clearly had the better talent. Now, I don't know what their offense is. They go down and chuck up some shots, and they were going in this year. Um, but they didn't. You the know, Big Z run was fun while it lasted. That was. The, the one game yeah. in January. There was one, <laughs> one, day, was one, one day in January. That was crazy. Points. Right. Yeah, that was really crazy. Um, I think he's a very talented offensive player. I think on defense is where they all lack. They can't really stop penetration or they can't really win their one-on-one matchups. And then I, I wish the best for all of them, but I think to grow into, like even the NBA, you got to be able to win one-on-one eventually, um, especially when it's, that's kind of what it is in the NBA. I so till the shot clock runs down, you got to win the end of the possession. So they're all, I mean, there's still lottery picks somehow, but. You don't hate the SEC though. You did go to the SEC tournament. Oh no, I'm, I'm a SEC basketball fan this year. Usually I liked them because they were underdogs, though. Like this year they had everybody ranked top 25 somehow and into the tournament, and now that's kind of what I uh, – my friends are Big Ten, mm-hmm. and they always have people in the tournament. I always say they're overrated. They're just playing bad basketball all year. And now the SEC was kind of like that. They got everybody in had and lost. Teams. And yeah. lost. Everybody lost. Yeah. Not everybody <laughs> lost. Alabama is that? in the final four. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> my team might have lost early, but There's that's like because four bad ones in the in yeah. the first round. Well, Micah Hamilton <laughs> got hurt. You said you saw that right. uh, in person in the SEC tournament in the the championship loss to Auburn, and so that that changed things. But boy, you just brought up something that I wondered about: who's the toughest running back you've ever faced? Is it Derrick Henry? And if so, are you so glad he's out of the division now, or is it someone else? Um, I think everybody's tough in their own right. I think Derrick Henry has his uh, things that he's good at that makes him tough. Um, the other guys, you know, might be shifty or something. Mm-hmm. Those fast guys that are pretty tough. Josh Jacobs was pretty mm-hmm. a demon, pretty much a demon uh, when he's motivated and going, it's strong and shifty. Um, everybody in their like week to week. I mean, Mixon did well against us last year. Now he's yeah. in our conference. Right. Um, I mean, everybody's going to have their. Their, their games where they look the best out there and everybody has their games where they don't look as good. But running back, like, if you're not bringing what you're supposed to bring, all of a sudden they're, they're off for 100 yards on you and you're looking, you're looking yeah. down on yourself. Derek did that to Jacksonville many times yeah. before you were yeah. here, okay. mainly. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, it wasn't ever your fault. <laughs> I want to, we were talking right before you got here actually about the new, and it reminded me as we were talking about the SEC, but this new Super League that could possibly happen in college football where there's seven 10 team divisions. What are your thoughts on that? Because do you do you like the conferences the way they are? What do you think that will well, do to college shifted. football? Uh, they just all shifted. They're already shifting, but now they're talking about it just a massive super league. They'll like break away from the NCAA. Oh. And they'll just have just college football. Just college mm-hmm. football will break away. And so so here's the thing. You would have 70 teams that are entrenched. Since I know you you dabbled a little bit when you were in London. Yale, Yale, Yale's going? So Yale, yeah. so that's what we're going to get to. So that's the thing. You would have to be one of the top 70 oh, yeah, where you're top, in that right. eight. Or you're so there's in the top bottom. 70. Then there's a second tier since I know you dabbled in European soccer when you were with the Jags in London. Yeah. So there's top 70. Oh, relegated and stuff. Yep. So the top 70 can't go down to Division Two, But Division then there would two. be, right, which wouldn't be D2 as we know it. It mm-hmm. would be like... I guess FCS. Yeah. So, okay. and then there would be 80, but then they would have the opportunity to play into this eighth division at the Division One Super League and compete level. in the playoffs and compete against the 70 that wild. are there. That is wild. I think. Uh, so we could technically be. Uh, yeah, you could be division like you could be we, competing against the Alabamas of the world if you play your way, unless you're in that yeah. 70 group. <laughs> you said, "Let's go." <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't like it, but I like it for that reason. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I think people are just so used to the way college football has always been that the, a, even the recent conference expansion is throwing people off. Like, mm-hmm. Why are UCLA and USC going to be in the Big Ten and, and you know all those? I don't know things. how the travel is going to be for that. Yeah, exactly. Because they're the not TV time, right? They're right. Like if you're a Duke and you, you got to go to Stanford for a field hockey game on a Tuesday, they're in the same conference now. Yeah, ACC, mm-hmm. ACC, exactly. Atlantic Coast Conference, yeah. fun, <laughs> right? <laughs> Well, one more on the college front, because then we do, you've been so gracious with your time and we want to let you go. And we do need your final four predictions from both the men's and the women's. But since we're in the college ranks and you brought it up to us before we came on the air, NIL transfer portal. Mm -hmm. Uh, I saw you tweeted about it, that the Ivy League player of the year is, or the freshman of the year is entering the portal. For you as a guy who who did your whole college career at an Ivy League school, Mm -hmm. stuck it out, now have a degree from an Ivy League university. 
But we look at these quote unquote mid majors like the Ivy Leagues and how power fives have been able to both in basketball and college pick and choose and they depart for them. What's your perspective as an alum? I mean, as a alum, I don't really like the whole transfer thing. It's kind of a older guy who's seen the rubric for college sports work. Um, I don't like the transfer thing, but if I coming up as a kid, is you know you can't really hate on them for transferring and going to their best opportunity where they feel like they're going to play or for coach leaves, um, them leaving. Uh, but it you know I don't really like the kind of mindset as a competitor that it breeds for kids. Um, as soon as things get hard, you leave to a different school, and it kind of waters down uh, the talent across the. Um, the leagues really because you're just going to go to where you can play. So of course, you know, but it's, it's good for mid majors um, low key because you know, you, you can't play a Duke. You, you transfer to somewhere. You're going to, you're going to play your 40 minutes to get a whole game and shoot whatever shots you want. And all of a sudden you get to the tournament, you're hot, you're shooting whatever shot, like you have the talent, but you just didn't have enough talent to beat out, you know, your freshman counterpart. Um, it just, it's just, you know, you used to be, have to get better to play. Now you just leave and go to where you can play. Mm -hmm. Uh, So I think it's watering downtown a little bit. And then there's no, I think what's what's helping the girls basketball game right now is these these girls are staying at their schools, kind of how guys used to stay at their school for a while, gain fandom, gain storylines, gain the rivalries, and then you're getting better as you're going, uh, playing against the same girls year in, year out. And it's just that big of a matchup, like when you see them again, like imagine – I don't know if J.J. Reddick played Tyler Hansbro, but did they? I don't think they. I mean, they've overlapped they one year. Like, that would be the game of the, the, right. the world. Like, you know what I'm right. saying? Right. It would be like Angel Reese, Caitlin Clark. Exactly. Mm-hmm. We would build to this, and it would be something that even the casual fans, because mm-hmm. they've heard about J.J. Reddick for years and years, they've heard about Tyler Hansbro. Yeah. And so even if you're a Kentucky fan, even if you're not a college basketball fan, you think, oh, I want to. You want to watch that. I want to watch mm-hmm. this. You know, the superstars going against each other. But superstars that have not only beat out their team, their, 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 Teammates for years and years to be number one. They've also beat out everybody in the ACC to be, you know, top dogs in the ACC year in, year out. You know, um, I think that that's the perfect equation for college sports. But it's not about college sports anymore. It's about the players, it's about the kids getting their opportunities and making it to the next level to get their money. And then the NIL. You can't, I hear football, like some kids aren't playing their senior year of high school football because why? You're guaranteed a million dollars if you make it to freshman year. You know, let's say you get to senior year of high school, you get hurt. They take that. You you can't make it. Take away a million dollars or you don't have a great year. They give your scholarship to somebody else. You lose out a million dollars. If I got a million dollars guaranteed, mm-hmm. you see kids at the combine doing it now. Why why would I risk that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And for the kid for who's getting out of a situation, I can't even blame him for that. Yeah. But that's just the the can of worms that you opened up with this NIL. And I don't know how to um regulate. I think you got to regulate it somehow if you want your brand of college sports still there because basically you're just making professionals from or amateur type professionals from from a younger age right eventually i feel like it's going to have to get to like almost a incentive-based contract like you have to play x amount yeah. of game but something because yep. if not like you said there's just going to be and you get the mindset of the kids who choose that but at the same time for the league you have to also protect yourself at some point right absolutely all right before we let you go sir you mentioned final four your storylines on the men's side a prediction for the men's basketball final <laughs> four national championship this weekend and then the women's basketball final four if i was national a, a betting man i'd bet <laughs> uconn but i don't even want uconn to win so i gotta bet nc state they're not gonna win though but you predict you well, <laughs> <laughs> but if i had well, to like tell NC somebody state else the universe to, yeah, but I'm going to root for NC State. Yeah, and then the on UConn the UConn will probably win. And then on the women's side, that's <laughs> that's going to be tougher. Like, mm-hmm. how, do we do we think Kaylin Clark is going to score 40 every game? Like, she got to have a off game one time. I mean, as someone who's watched almost every game of hers this year, there have been nights where she goes cold. I mean, Nebraska they blew a 13 mm. point lead in the fourth quarter because she didn't score a single point. Dang. But it hasn't happened so far in the tournament. That's what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Well, the odds though, it's going to happen once. Yeah, I mean. The round of 32, they only had four players score. She dropped 32, though. Yeah. So that's like that's the thing. If the role players roll, I think they beat UConn, but then they have to play South Carolina. I think UConn wins it all. You do. Sir, you South Carolina been sides? squeaking by, squeaking. Oh, yeah. Again, I think it's every 10 years. Yeah. It, it did happen like 10 years ago, the men and women won. Yeah. So, but the, South Carolina been squeaking by. I can't. Yeah. 
And they they get, I don't know, they be up 20 and then all of a sudden, right. you know, I think they can't live that way. You just picked the school that's closest to Yale. That's what you did. Actually, we don't <laughs> like UConn. Okay. <laughs> we say we're better than them at sports. Um, <laughs> back when Foley was on the team, I would always say, because I think Yale did play UConn like a year after I left and we won. So you, you and it. you let them know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Can I ask a hypothetical real quick? If it would have came down to Kentucky and Yale? Kentucky. Okay. But Over I had, the alma I had, mater. I, had, I, had, they, I didn't play Yale basketball. Yeah, that's true. Uh, okay. that's true. That's so you funny. are going to be donating, though, at some point down the line. Kentucky, I had Kentucky Yale final and Kentucky win. Okay. Yeah. I told everybody my bracket don't count this year. I love that. You pick with your <laughs> heart. Mine, mine yep. either. <laughs> well, the city of Jacksonville loves your heart. They, they love everything you've said so far. And we can't thank you enough, Foyer, for joining us for a wonderful conversation. Welcome back anytime you want, especially, I know, college I basketball. Yes. You're always looking to talk basketball. This is Helmets and Heels on 1010XL and 92.5 FM.